welcome to the den. Thanks very much for coming by and uh, if you're following on from the unboxing of the uh, clone Lego Titanic um, then welcome again uh, but if you're not uh, we did a little quick unboxing of how you get this kit and uh, perhaps might want to pop into that and have a quick look at that first of all. So this is video one of three um, this is the um, build for the bow section of the Titanic kit. So this is the clone Lego Titanic kit. So this is the bow section. As you know, the main kit comes in three parts, or is built in three parts. So we've got the, the bow, the mid, and the stern section. And this is just the bow section, that, uh, as we see in front of us. Um, now, in the unboxing, um, I did talk about the box, the packet numbers, and whether or not there was going to be a sequential packet number opening, um, like Lego do. You you get the different sections in a box, and you build that section, and everything's bagged up and numbered and so on. So you know exactly what it is. Uh, that wasn't the case uh, for this. Um, it turned out that the bagging numbers uh, weren't quite there. So let's have a quick look at that video, and uh, let's see what. Uh, what we came up with. So here we are straight after the unboxing and as you can see there is a fair amount of packets to sort. Now I did mention in the unboxing video that um, they started to come through numbered and strangely enough uh, when I got the instruction book out um, and I said oh I couldn't see any numbering bags or anything like that there at the top you see bag number one but after that we don't really see bags anyway I've not had a good breakdown of the instructions so uh, it may be the case but um, anyway there we are <laughs> I mean look at this beautiful isn't it? it really is a nice uh, instruction booklet anyway so um, besides the point um, we have numbered bags now we don't know in what order they are so there's like lots of ones and lots of twos however and I'm not too sure I can get a close-up, uh, but uh, I'm not, you can probably just about see it on there. There's sort of a, a reddish writing. It's probably more pronounced on here. Okay, and um, how I'm going to go at it is the, the kit is, their kit is uh, 1881. Okay, and the, what they have on the bag is 1881. The number of the bag which in this case is um, is number two. And there's a number after it. And it's very difficult to pull out that number. Now, some are really clear, but what it means is it's kit 1881, so it's the Titanic kit. And secondly, um, the bag, second number is the bag number itself, which is number two in this case, and what set it belongs to. So if that is, that looks like a four there, so that will be number four. And what I've done is I've got some buckets, some bins ready, and I'll be putting one, two, three, and I think that's that's quite a clear one there. You actually might better make that out, I'm not too sure on the video. But it goes one, eight, eight, one, five, three. So pack five, uh, section three, that's how that reads. Now, I'm gonna go through all these, some really difficult to read, um, but I think you know the process of deduction. It's not going to be too hard to put them in a in a in a in a frame. Now the other ones that um, are is more bigger units. These don't actually come with any numbering, um, but I mean you can pretty much tell what they are anyway. And there's not that much that you wouldn't break it down into the different colours and everything. So those are the larger bags of items. They don't come with any recognition. Oh, I tell a lie. There. Yeah. Just faintly at the bottom there, one eight eight one fourteen. That's the first time I've seen that. So there is some markers on the bags, maybe. So it seems as though uh, we can probably sort some of these out as well. But it's not the end of the world. Um, most of it will all pull together, and it won't be a big deal. And it's part of the fun, for goodness' sake. So you can see how I lay out. I have the trays, and I'll have everything laid out, and um, then we can get on and start building. So anyway. Leave it with me. So, okay, um, so when I last left you, I was uh, sorting out packets, but <laughs> I came to the conclusion that their numbering system was a bit vague, and I decided to go back to the traditional sorting out of bits and pieces. So after a few hours' work, 
I've sort of got things, most of the parts, into trays and orders and some sort of order. So I'm ready to start the build now. So I'm happy with the way it is. As you can see, you're using these plastic trays, easily obtainable. But you can have any parts. There are 9,090 parts. So uh, it's going to be a nice little journey, this. Anyway, um, here we go. Let's get started on page one. Okay, so three hours or thereabouts in sorting all the bits and pieces out, which is part of the deal, so there we are. I just wanted to share this moment with you of the actual start to the build. So let's, ready? Because this is the beginning of however long. Stage one. There it is, the start of the Titanic. I'll see you back later. Hi everybody, welcome back. So as you can see from the, those uh, short clips, um, everything had to be debagged um, and it's not set out. You know, I thought at first that it might be bagged in sections, but it, it clearly wasn't. So um, not the end of the world. I always like to tray my stuff up anyway. And it makes more for the experience, to be honest with you, and, and the build quality and everything like that. So how was the build quality to date? So this is just, obviously, as you can see, the bow section, but absolutely no problems whatsoever. No missing parts, no issues with fitting, no issue with mouldings. Occasionally, not so much now, you can sometimes get mismoulded parts, but absolutely none of that. In fact... I'm so impressed with this particular set at the moment. The only thing to my mind that means it's not Lego is the fact that there's no Lego stamped on the uh, on the actual bricks themselves. So um, that's about the only thing. Everything went together really good. The manual was absolutely top notch. Um, and also with the colours, some of the older style manuals didn't differentiate that much between colours and you'd, you'd think, well, that's an orange. You ever look at the sort of orange bricks in this and you ever look at the yellow bricks and there's not a huge amount of difference, really, you know, it's not super bright orange, um, but does that translate to the actual printing? Well, it does. You know, you can actually clearly see the difference between the orange pieces and the yellow pieces and, of course, the red pieces, which can sometimes print badly, but also the greys. You know, you've got your light grey, your much bit darker grey, and, you know, they are to be differentiated between, because there's a number of parts that are very similar. So um, that absolutely worked for me. The, the manual was nicely laid out and everything, so everything really works really, really well from that. So um, before we come back for the conclusion on this section, let's have a quick look around the ship itself. Okay. Okay, so now we can have a, a somewhat closer look at the model, and um, yeah, re you know, I mean, everything sits really nicely and fitted really nicely, and there was quite some ingenious ways that um, uh, it all came together and so on, but some of the main elements is, like I say, some of this uh, in parts can be a little bit loose. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, so we've got our forecast up here and our first stack um, on there. As we rotate the model around, we do have two plates um, which have Titanic written on. Now, these are screen printed. Sometimes in some older models or uh, earlier models, depends on which way you uh, phrase it, um, did come with stickers. Now, that's not for necessarily for this, but these uh, newer sets of uh, It's Not Lego um, tend to come with this screen printed. So Titanic is screen printed on this side. And as we turn it round, it's tight it's uh, screen printed on the other side and that actually goes for the stern as well but we'll, we'll come to that when we've uh, finished it we obviously have our two flags um i do need to actually count the stars on the flag so we have our um american flag and we also have our british flag and um uh, the only thing I needed to check was um the actual flag post as it were this is like a it's like a rubber um, flexible post and as you can see it sort of not deforms it but I'm not too sure if that's exactly what is in the Lego kit I mean it works fine enough and I th I'm thinking if you you know you didn't like that you could actually change that for something else or get the part 
quite cheaply from Lego. It's not, not a big problem. So we have those uh, flags. Once again, these flags are screen printed. Um, they're not stickers or anything like that. They are laminated and encapsulated like that. So they match the um, the original version. Um, all our strings and everything like that are at the right length and so on. So that's really good. And everything goes together uh, really nicely. Now, obviously, we've got the interior part of the, uh, the bow section. And this is the part which shows up the grand staircase. So we have the grand, we have the four boilers at the bottom here, uh, faithfully represented, and then we have the grand staircase going up from second class to the first class rooms, and then onto the um, what would be the, uh, the the grand staircase at the top, uh, with the printed sundial element that indicates the clock that would have stayed at the top of of that uh, particular part of the ship. So um, once again, that screen printed, that wasn't uh, a sticker. So, you know, I was really pleased about that. Um, I don't know how the piece count was on this actually. One thing I didn't check on was the piece count. I think the cranes and everything, this is the, the detail of this is really, really good. I'm so looking forward to building the other two sections. And then of course, um, as with all these kits, I then auction them off and, uh, and uh, they go off to children's charities and things like that, so which we support. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, really nice. And it was a really good build. I, I, I must say, I really enjoyed that, and I'm going to enjoy doing the second thing. Um, expect a little bit more time, obviously, because you're going to have to box, um, you know, don't, you're not going to get baggy numbers. No big deal. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I mean, it does give... This is some weight. I mean, that's a three kilo... Um, piece of kit. I mean, that'll be over 3,000 pieces in that. It's a 9,000 piece kit. I'd imagine a lot of this in the bow has gone into this. There's a lot of detail. Um, we've got all our anchors here. We've got all the lifting gear, some lifeboats and things. So there is a lot of detail in that. I think the second, the midsection is detailed, but I don't think it will have as much of this sort of curvature and geometry that's going on, obviously. And the stern will be sort of a similar uh, bit of work as well, but I think there's less piece count. So I would be interested to find out in how many pieces were in each section, but I would have said that I think that the bow, um, the bow section is, is going to be the uh, probably the largest piece count. So, so far so good. Absolutely uh, great build. Um, clear, concise instructions in the book. So I was really happy with that. So let's go to the summary. So there we are. A little bit of a close up of the uh, the uh, the bow section of the Titanic there. And yep, like I say, absolutely uh, no issues whatsoever to date. So we're going really well. One thing I would say is that I found that actually building this has been a sort of a bit of a journey. Actually, I've quite enjoyed it. It sort of made me want to watch the film again. So I watched the film, which I hadn't seen for years. Now that's the Cameron film, so it, um, and. It, it started to bring the thing alive. I'm starting to look at things. Well, you know, this is the bit in the forecastle where Captain Smith went in and nobody saw him after that. You know, he went down with a ship and, you know, and, and this bit and that bit and, and everything. You know, I started to relate to it and actually sort of get an invested interest, you know, an emotional interest in this. And, you know, went ahead and watched A Night to Remember, the 1958-59 black and white film. Then started reading the books. I bought some, I got some of the books off Kindle and started reading those. And what it's meaning is that this whole build is a bit of a journey, you know. And as I pointed out, you see the, you know, the boilers at the bottom. You remember the men that were down there, and you know, and then the staircases, the different classes, and things like that. So, yeah, I do advise. I mean, quite honestly, if you are building this, is perhaps we invest some time in reading those things as you go along as well. Other than such an awful tragedy, um, so. Yeah, really good. Anyway, looking forward to the midsection. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if there's any comments or questions that you'd like to ask, please put them down in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and have a quick look at the other videos and bits and pieces of the deal. So till next time, which will be the midsection, take care. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye.